love to the life of Miriam Hagai Sturman. There is a ritual that we begin with. The ritual is called Kriya. Literally, it means uh, tearing. When our ancestors heard of the loss of a loved one, they would tear the article of clothing that they were wearing. It was a sign of, of grief and loss, to be sure, but also a sign of the confusion and sometimes even the anger that we feel when someone that we love is taken from our midst. At a time when perhaps it is uh, most difficult to offer words of blessing. We're actually given words by our tradition. And so, Gilia Amiel, I'll ask you to repeat the words of the blessing after me, first in the Hebrew and then in the English. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Dayan HaEmet Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, the judge of truth. If you wish, you may be seated. Shiviti Adonai Lenegdi Tamid, Kimin Mi Ba Lemot. I have set the eternal always before me. God is at my side. I shall not be moved. Therefore does my heart exult, my soul rejoice, my being is secure. For you will not abandon me to death, nor let your faithful one see destruction. You show me the path of life, your presence brings fullness of joy. Enduring happiness is your gift. Death has taken our beloved Miriam Haggai Sturman. Our friends grieve in their darkened world. In their silence, there is lamentation. In their tears, there is loneliness. Lost in their sorrow, may they find the presence of loving friends. Hear them, O God, and be with them. For Miriam's love that united us in life in which death cannot sever. For her companionship that we shared along life's path and which continues through the tenderness of memory. For the gifts of her heart and mind that brought us joy and happiness and is now a precious remembrance. For all these and more, we give our thanks to God. In this time of grief, we listen to the voice of our sacred scriptures that brings us the ever new message of God's nearness. It tells us of our kinship with the Creator in light as in darkness, in joy as in sorrow, in life as in death. Psalm 23, the Shepherd's Psalm. Adonai rohi lo Bihino te she yarbitseni Al me menuchot, al me menuchot, yena haleni Nahavshi shove vishove Yan heni vimahagle Yan heni Vemagle tzedek Lemahan shemo Gam ki elech Begei tzal mavet Lo yirara Ki ata imadi Shivtecha Umishantecha Ema yena hamuni Taharoch lifanai lifanai Shohan neget orerai Di shanta vashem en roshi Kosi revaya Achto vachesed Yerdefuni, 
that you received here at the cemetery, there is a translation of the 23rd Psalm. I invite you to read with me if you are so moved. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There is a custom observed in many Jewish homes, that on Friday night, as we welcome Shabbat, there are blessings that we recite. We recite blessings over the candles to welcome Shabbat, the Kiddush, the blessing over the Sabbath wine, celebrating the joy of Shabbat, and Motzi, the blessing that we recite over the challah, the special loaf of bread baked in honor of Shabbat, and which then carries through to the meal that will be shared. There are also opportunities for those around the table to bless one another parents for their children, and husbands and wives for one another. And the words that are actually given to a husband to recite for his wife, the words of blessing, come to us from the book of Proverbs, chapter 31. And they are known, these verses are known as a woman of valor. And I think they so beautifully describe Miriam's life and what she meant to her husband, Ben, of blessed memory to her children, her grandchildren, to all who are, be, who are privileged to be touched by her love and her life. A woman of valor who can find, she is more precious than fine pearls. Her husband trusts in her and so he lacks nothing. She does him good, never harm all the days of her life. She perceives that her labor is rewarding, her candle burns on into the night. She reaches out to those in need and extends her hands to the poor. She is clothed in strength and dignity, and she faces the future cheerfully. She speaks with wisdom. The law of kindness is on her lips. Her children rise up and bless her. Her husband sings her praises. Many daughters have done valiantly, but you excel them all. In his sorrow, Job cried out, Adonai Natan v'adonai lakach, yihi shem Adonai mevorach. God has given and God has taken away. Blessed be the name of God. In ancient people, we are well acquainted with grief and the valley of shadows. Death and sorrow are not strangers to us. Yet the centuries have taught us that a good name endures beyond the grave and that there is strength in faith. With Job we say, Adonai Natan, God you have given. You gave us a loved one, Miriam, who will not be forgotten. For all that was good and enduring in her life, we offer the deepest thanks of our hearts. Adonai Lakach, God, you have taken away. We pray for the strength to turn our broken hearts into an altar of trust, before which we acknowledge your sovereignty and your love, as we now say, Yehi Shem Adonai Mevorach, blessed be the name of God, now and forever. Amen. I invite each of you to take these next few moments to call forward the cherished memories that you have of Miriam's life and how your, her love touched each of your hearts in this moment of silent reflection.
I first heard of Miriam's passing when Yehuda called me from Chicago Jewish funeral and let me know of her passing. And he started to talk a little bit about what he had learned about Miriam and Ben of blessed memory and how incredible, how powerful it was to hear the story of their lives. And that only was reinforced a thousandfold, as I had the opportunity to speak with Gilia and Amiel and to read the incredible words that were shared uh, through the, uh, the notice that appeared on the website and through words, Gilia, that you shared with me from family as well. And I was brought to this, a beautiful midrash, this, uh, this story that the rabbis tell of two very dear friends uh, who had a custom of sharing long walks together. And on one of these walks, they happened upon a harbor and they were standing at a railing watching the activity in the harbor. And they noticed that there was a ship about to set sail, a cruise ship filled with people. They were singing, they were waving, there were streamers, there was music, great celebration as this cruise was about to depart from port. And at just about the same moment, they noticed a ship returning to harbor. No fanfare, no singing or dancing or music. And one friend turns to the other and says, you know, this is exactly the opposite of what should be happening. The ship that's about to set sail is not necessarily a cause for celebration because we do not know yet what storms it will encounter on its journey or whether it will safely make it to port again. Whereas the ship that has safely returned to port, that's the cause for celebration. And the rabbis say, this is what happens in our lives too. That when a baby is born, there is much celebration, as of course there should be. But at the end of a person's life, a life that is, was so uh, in, incredibly well lived, that this is also an opportunity for us to celebrate that life. And we do so now. We celebrate Miriam's life with the words of her family. We'll first hear from two of Miriam's children, Gilia and Amiel, and then we will hear from three of her grandchildren, from Ezra, from Talia, and from Dan. I might have to take off my glasses because they're so foggy, um, but I guess I can still talk. <coughs> My mother was a very special person and had many talents, but one of the things that everyone knows about my mother is that family always, always came first. That was her <clears throat> best and happiest times is when she was with family. So when I was born, I was number one. And when later Shelley came, she was number one, too. And uh, Amiel, he's, of course, number one, three. And the reason that we were all number one was because my mother always wanted all three of us to know that we were all number one in her heart. When I married Dan, my mother inherited Darian, Lisa, and Lindsay as new grandchildren and our family expanded even more. I wanted to <coughs> just talk a little bit about the names 
of Miriam's great-grandchildren. In Israel, she has Leah, Hodaya, Neta. She has Tal, she has Amit and Danielle. And in our neck of the woods in the USA, we also have Isabel and Benjamin and our very, very newest little addition, two and a half weeks old, Ziggy Lane. So our family has expanded. Mom was also a very, very passionate lover of literature and reading. And all of us have that same passion in our families. And as Charles Dickens said, it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. The best of times to have such a special family and a special mother. And the worst of times for this horrible pandemic that we want to go away. Mom, I love you very much. Nishika. I took some time last night to put some thoughts in writing. And I'm calling it a mother's love. <laughs> Our dear mom and Safta and Safta Rabba has passed on and left a gaping hole in our hearts. We can take comfort knowing she is reunited with her beloved Benjamin. She missed him so very much. <laughs> and all of us who knew Miriam as family or friend is honored to have been touched by this great woman. I can happily say that the love I received from my mother was so deep, so caring, so unconditional, that even as I am numb and in shock from losing her, <laughs> I know she gave me the strength to carry on and be the gentle, loving parent to my own kids, Elijah and Anne Maytal, that she was to me. I know others today are speaking about the many beautiful qualities and accomplishments of Miriam. So I'd like to share just a couple of my own personal reflections on this special person. I was so blessed to have as my mother. My earliest memories are filled with a warm and loving family home with my dad as my hero and mom as my angel. But she wasn't just a loving mother and housewife, typical of her generation. Miriam was a devoted educator, talented artist, and ambitious business person, always looking to improve her knowledge and skills and the welfare of our family. When I was a preschooler, I didn't really want to go to preschool. I had everything I wanted right at home and with my mom. So she agreed to let me stay home. And when she had classes to attend for her behavioral science graduate degree, she'd take me with her and introduce me to graduate students in the biology labs to keep me occupied. I was as happy as a pig in mud, peering through microscopes at the fruit flies. Never a dull moment with mom. As I grew up, I came to appreciate my mother, not just as a wonderful parent, but as a loving and supportive wife who was very devoted to my dad, as he was to her. Family was everything to my dear parents. I will forever be grateful to you, Mom, for all your love and support. and especially for giving me the most beautiful childhood a son could ever hope for. 
and now you are my angel in heaven. <laughs> Love you always. I wanted, I wanted to say something about myself that in myself that was also my parent. She raised me and she raised the grace of everyone. She was so strong, so resolute and so compassionate. Subba once told me that he hoped I could live a meaningful life and contribute to society in some important way, at least as half as much as Safta did. That's a true story. He didn't say that to be controversial, but rather to honor the great woman he loved, our mother, and our Safta, because she was extraordinary. She was extraordinary to me only because in my sorrow, I can't find the right word, the one that truly describes Safta. But as I look at you, you've come to honor her and I know just how right Saba was when he explained that her love was a blessing to this world. And those of us that knew Safta are better for that. Much better. Zichor na libracha. Our Safta, our Bubale Ziskai. There is so much to say, so many good memories. We are so lucky for that. Even though we lived far away from each other, we felt so close and so loved by our Safta. Her smile, her hug, her delicate hands, her sweet, gentle voice, her laughter with tears in her eyes will always be in our hearts. Safta. The excitement we felt growing up every time you and Saba came to visit us cannot be described in words. We would stare out the window waiting. You would always right away open up your suitcases filled with gifts. We hated to go to school the next day and just waited to get back home to be with you. When we'd come to visit you, you always made your home so warm and nice for us. The house in Kenosha holds such sweet memories for us. The smells of your cooking and how you loved sharing cooking tips with me. You were so proud how yours was the only fish I would ever eat till this day. You had an artistic soul. You saw everything that was beautiful in the world. You made everything around you more beautiful. Thank you for passing on to me and my girls the love of art of painting, you've taught me so much. You were so, so proud of your family, of your grandchildren. We've talked among us and realized you always talk to each of us about how amazing the others are. It was a funny realization. You saw the good in all of us. You would tell stories and laugh. You made me laugh so much when I was with you, even the last time I visited you in the home. You loved singing, singing with Saba in the car, singing in English, in Hebrew. You told me once about a song you love, 500 Miles by Peter, Paul and Mary. We listened to it together and we cried as you were telling me it always reminded you of your family in Israel and how you were always a little torn between your two countries. Safta, I'm happy for you. Happy you lived such a full, adventurous, great life. I'm happy for you that you are at peace now with Saba and with your parents. And down here, you have so many family members who love you and will miss you. Thank you for being our inspiration. 
thank you everyone for being here to show your respects to my grandmother. Her final gift. Strangely, early Monday morning, I woke in my sleep, literally choking. Just a couple hours later, I learned that Sufta was gone. Heartbreakingly, the ledger inched forward a single digit online as it recorded her death, another victim of COVID-19. We are not unique in our loss, but it doesn't leave us any less rudderless. I've sadly written almost more obituaries and eulogies than I can count, but I wanna share something different with all of you today. I have nearly 60, 60 voicemails from our matriarch still on my phone. To say she kept in touch is clearly an understatement. And today I want to share just a few with you, one for each of the last four years. Politics were more my grandfather's cup of tea, but my grandmother was still engaged as she hit a major milestone. 90 years upon this earth. Listen here. Have a good afternoon. This is Safka. I was watching the Senate Committee on Taxes and how they are fighting on how and who to pay and how and where and what to do. So interesting. I don't quite understand how they're coming up with and what they're coming with but it's nice to watch it happen. And maybe you can explain to me some of your opinions of that when it gets to be there. I'm going down for dinner soon, soon, so I'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a good day and I love you. Bye. Science, technology, medicine, psychology, my grandmother was a sponge when it came to critical thinking and appreciation of progress in this world. She was especially proud of any innovation that came out of Israel, her birthplace. This is what she had to say at 91 years old. Hi, Don. This is Shasta telling you that I forward to you a photo of a brain with an implant for people who have Alzheimer or any issues that they don't know how to deal with and can't move, do anything. And so this is good for Alzheimer people that Israel came up. And I think you will see that brain. And uh, it's just amazing to see that kind of stuff coming from Israel. And again, you know, I love you. As always, you're my precious. Bye-bye. Simple acts of thoughtfulness are never to be taken for granted. And I have oh so many messages with Safta just letting me know she was thinking of me. At 92 and even 93, just this year, she still called me often. Here are a couple of short messages. Hi, Don. I'm trying to reach you to tell you that I'm so glad to hear from you and uh, hope that uh, we will see each other and exchange some notes. So I will be so, so happy to see you soon. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Hi, Don. This is Safta calling to say hello to you and tell you I love you. Bye. A friend once heard me having a conversation with my grandmother on speakerphone. She then said to me, you know, she lives to love you. And of course she was right. My, grandfather, my grandmother lived to love me and so many others. So where do we go from here? For me, as ironic as it may sound, I choose to see her leaving us as her final gift to each of us, 
to all of us. Perhaps in her death, we will choose to be inspired by everything that she was, by everything we allow to live within us and flourish today. If we harness the best of who she is, it will mean that we believe in limitless possibilities. The world and this country in particular is a fragile, fractured and dangerous place. And yet for all the hate and division, we've seen amazing acts of kindness by police marching alongside protesters pleading for racial equality. We've seen them take a knee alongside those same citizens too. We've seen a black man hug a white supremacist and ask him, why do you hate me? As the two embraced, the answer came, I don't know. I can't say in good conscience that Sufta knew a lot of what was going on in the world these last few months, but I did see her with my beautiful partner, Autumn, in February, before all went to hell in a handbasket. Some days weren't so good for her then, but there were also some days where she summoned the clarity of the titan of a woman she absolutely was. And so I think again about her final gift to all of us. She was the kind of person who would be proud of each of us no matter what. There were truly no strings attached. And yet, even still, let's give her something to really be proud of. She once told me, even though some had mistranslated the Hebrew, that Moses was actually shining as he received the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. She too was nearly always shining, a beacon of undeniable goodness. So today, and in the days that lie ahead, let's be that beacon too. Thank you, Gilia, Amiel. Thank you, Ezra, Talia, and Don, for those beautiful words of, of love. As I was thinking about this morning and what we are here to do, I was brought to the parasha, the Torah portion for this week, Vayetze. Vayetze begins with Jacob fleeing from his home and finding a place so desolate that the only comfort he could find for himself was a rock that he used as a pillow. And he has a dream. And he dreams that he sees a ladder that's extending from the earth up to the heavens. And there are angels going up and down the ladder. And Jacob sees God at the top of the ladder. And God says, fear not, Jacob, for I am with you and I will be with you. And as a result of this dream, he awakens to a different clarity, a new clarity. He says, Achen yesh Adonai b'makom hazev v'anochi lo yadati. That surely God is in this place and I, I did not know it. There is a, a commentary, that, well, there are many commentaries as to the significance of this verse. One is that Jacob was finally able to see the goodness that was around him, the blessing of his life. The Musarists talk about hakarat hatov, the recognition of the good, the gratitude. And this was a midah that Miriam made front and center for herself. It was a foundation upon which she built a life, hakarat hatov, recognizing the good, no matter what the circumstance. But I was also drawn to a commentary that I think especially speaks to Miriam and her beloved Benjamin as well. Sforno, the Italian medieval commentator said, there can be no question that this is a location, this Bethel where Jacob awoke, from where the gift of prophetic insights is dispensed. Seeing that I have been granted such an insight without even having expected it or prepared myself for it spiritually, it is a fact that the characteristics of a person undergo changes in the land of Israel, just as the climate and the very air in this country are different, contribute to one's mental and spiritual progress. Our sages have phrased this in the Talmud as the very air of the land of Israel makes one wiser. I just thought, what a beautiful thought that Miriam, who was born and raised in the land of Israel, pre-state Israel, 
that she acquired wisdom, wisdom that was innate, that is very much intrinsic to the land itself, but also a wisdom that derives from experience. And what an incredible experience Miriam's life was. She had an inspirational life, born into a religious, a very observant family in the early pre-state Israel. They were true halutzim. They were true pioneers. She grew up in pre-war Jerusalem with time spent also at a family farm in Shafia. Her father, her farmer grandfather, tragically was murdered. Her father, uh, his life as a rabbi. And though she wanted to study art, uh, she, kibud uh, avaim, right? She honored and respected the will of her parents that she, it's just something that they thought would be more appropriate, become a teacher, study education. And so she did. And as the War of Independence grew imminent, she moonlighted in training for, in which she served as a, she would serve as a combat medic, treating the casualties and, that came through in uh, one of the most terrible of all battles of the War of Independence, the battle at Latrun. These experiences shaped Miriam. She cultivated resilience, curiosity, strength, and a devotion to family that sustained her and nourished her family for 93 years. She also developed a very independent spirit. She believed in the words of her family that women's rights were human rights before it became a slogan. She shattered glass ceilings in the words of her family everywhere she went, but not with a blunt instrument. She favored a velvet hammer. Some of the words used to describe her that you've seen and that you know Love, beauty, values, devotion, gentleness, inspiration, resilience, versatility, knowledge, wisdom, uniqueness, warmth, and kindness. Her beauty, and Gilia shared a photo of Miriam and Benjamin, it must have been right before their marriage or just after their marriage, right. from 1948. Right. And the smiles just from the two of them, and especially from Miriam. Right? She was beautiful both outside and inside. That is clear. This, so this young American Navy officer, Ben Sturman, captured her heart. They shared more than 63 years of life and love, bringing three wonderful children into this world, Gilia, Shelley, and Amiel. They had, as you've heard, an incredible life together. Miriam was devoted to him and to their children and then to the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren. After having Gilia in Israel, Miriam and Ben had a new start in America, a new country for her, a return to home for him. She thrived, fiercely proud of her two countries, Israel and America. She instilled this in her children as well as her Jewish faith. Shelley and Amiel were born and together with teaching to help support the family, caring for her family, being mom and wife, Miriam pursued a graduate degree in education. Gilia described her mom as superwoman. They returned to Israel in 1971, and Miriam ran the education department in the city of Lod. I, I think we might have been there at the same time. I was doing the calculations. I was actually at Ben Shemin, a youth village which is right next to Lud, And we would walk into Lud to do a little shopping and to take a little break from our studies. So I'm not sure, this was 19, 1977. You were there. So you were there. <laughs> I knew you looked familiar. <laughs> Coming back to the States, Miriam trained to be a travel agent and opened and ran her own successful business. She was very hands-on, not only handling travel business, but fixing the printer when it needed to be fixed and bringing Gilia into the business as well. Miriam was so talented and excelled at most everything she put her mind to try and to do. In art, she worked with watercolors, oil, and sculpture. Her children have many treasured pieces of her creation. She also created with food too, and you've heard amazing cook that she, that she was. So it was shared with me that, Talia, that Miriam told 
each of her grandchildren that Dan, Ezra, Talia, Matan, Hagit, Elijah, and Annie, that you are amazing, you are the best. And she meant it for each of them. Such resilience and versatility, such an amazing life, so well lived. Not just the number of years, which in and of itself is significant, but the meaning that she infused within each and every day of her life. Miriam was a loving mother, a wife, grandmother, great-grandmother. She was full of joy and vitality. She was a great storyteller and had great knowledge and wisdom that she imparted freely and that she continued to build upon with this incredible curiosity that she possessed. She was the anchor and matriarch of the family, keeping in touch with everyone, offering support whenever needed. And she was able to bridge not only physical distance, but even as dementia set in, she found a way to continue to bridge that distance as well with family. Temple Jeremiah became a very special place for her. She enjoyed coming to services and loved each of the three cantors that she experienced with us. Music was so important to her. And though she was raised in a religious and observant uh, family, she continued to question Judaism and came much more to a liberal approach of Judaism that fit and blended the, the intersection of science and religion. We, all of us, who are privileged to be a part of her life, cherish the memories that we have and recall her as a blessing in our lives. She leaves behind a great legacy, her family, here and in Israel and throughout. We celebrate the life of this devoted daughter, this devoted wife, this devoted mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, this devoted friend, this lover of Israel and of the United States. Zichana Livracha, may her memory continue to be a blessing. And to this let us say, Amen. We continue with the memorial prayer, El Malei Rachamim. I invite those who are seated to please rise. El Malei Rachamim, Shochein Bam Romim, Hametzei Menucha Nechona, Tachat Kanfei HaShechina, Im Kedoshim Utehorim, Kezohar Akiyam Asirim, Et nishmat Miriam bat Zalmin Chaim Vilea, Shalcha Leolama Bal Harachamim, Yasti Rehab Seta Kenafav Leolamim, Vait Ror Bitora Chaim et Nishmata, Adonai Unachalata, Vitanuach Bishalom al Mishkava, Enoma. Amen. Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to Miriam Haggai Surman, Miriam Bad Zalman Chaim Vilea, who has entered eternity. O God of mercy, let her find refuge in your eternal presence and let her soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is her inheritance. May she rest in peace. And once again we say, I mean, the dust returns to the earth as it was, the spirit returns to God who gave it. It is only the house of the spirit which we now lay within the earth, for the spirit itself cannot die. Receive in mercy, O God, the soul of our departed Miriam. Grant her that everlasting peace which you have prepared for us in the world to come. Though no human eye has seen, nor ear has heard, nor mind has grasped it, still is our sure inheritance and our everlasting portion. O God, help us to understand that grief and love go hand in hand. That the pain which loss inflicts is the measure of a love that is stronger than death. Though we cry in the anguish of our hearts, may we be like children who know that their parent is near and who cling unafraid to the trusted hand. In this spirit, O God, do we commit all that is precious to us to your keeping as we repeat words hallowed by the generations, the words of the Kaddish prayer. 
You can find that also in the pamphlet on the back cover. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shemei Raba v'alma divra chirute v'amlich malchute v'chayechon uv'yomechon v'chaye d'chol beit Yisrael v'agala uv'zman kari v'imru amin yehe shemei Raba mevarach leolam ome omaya yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitpaar v'yitromam v'yitnase Vitadar, Vitale, Vitalal, Shmed Kutsha, Brihu, Le Ela, Min Kol, Birchata, Vishirata, Tushpechata, Venechamata, Damiran, Biama, Vimru, Amin, Yehe, Shlama, Rabba, Min Shamaya, Vechaim, Alenu, Vel Ko Yisrael, Vimru, Amin, Ose, Shalom, Bimramal, Huya, Se, Shalom, Alenu, Vel Ko Yisrael, Amen. May God grant peace to all who mourn the passing of Miriam and bring comfort to all the bereaved who are among us. And together we say, Amen. At the end of the day, we gently tuck our children in for the night. At the end of a person's life, the last act of Gimilut Chasadim, the last act of loving kindness that we can do for her, is to cover her grave. In a moment, those of us present at gravesite will have the opportunity to fulfill this mitzvah. The custom is to place three shovelfuls of earth within the grave and then to replace the shovel so that each person can fulfill the mitzvah with fullness of intention. As part of this committal, we will also place earth from Mount of Olives in Jerusalem that connects the the ceremony here with our people's spiritual home and the land that Miriam loved so dearly from birth and throughout her life.
If uh, a little drone needs to use the bathroom, that's a problem. Yeah. 
find a place on the way home. She'll be fine. Okay. She'll be fine on the way home. Stop somewhere. Right, Annie? Yeah. Well, Rabbi, I'm asking you like you would know the answer yeah. to that. Yeah, yeah. Annie, yeah. well, we will take it.
Whoever else would like to come forward, please do so. There are several. There are several. Yeah, there are several shovels. Yes, you can oh, you just take a shovel. Yes. Yeah. we do the gloves.
other side, right? Um, Thank you, everybody.